It's tough enough for undocumented immigrants struggling to make ends meet, even harder when they've been misled. People believe there is a law that they can just submit an application if they've been here for more than 10 years. Even worse, there are lawyers waiting to scam them out of hard-earned savings as they make reassuring promises. You're in good hands, trust me, I know what I'm doing. But in fact, their clients are getting pushed closer to deportation. Solo escucho hablar de inmigración y me da como que se me alborotan los nervios. Hi, baby! Come give mommy a hug! Charlotte Nurse left Granada in search of her American dream. This is too much work for mommy. But on a spring day in 2016, she and her infant son just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. The driver of the stolen SUV crashes into another SUV turning into the intersection. Each car careened into a woman and child. They said, he's fine, nothing happened to him, you were in a car accident. 30 surgeries, a leg lost to amputation, but she's determined to be there for three-year-old Michael. What can a Chinese immigrant who speaks no English do to earn a living? Chong Li Lu tried different things, but ended up working in the subway as the monochord man. This week, we go in on stories about coming to America. Good fences make good neighbors. It's an old adage and the title of a new installation by Ai Weiwei, an artist's response to a complicated issue. Washington Square Arch got a fence. America is staring down the prospect of a campaign promise at once derided and applauded. That damn wall. So what's it going to be? Fences or walls? While we, the taxpayers, debate the details of a 30-foot-tall, 2,000-mile expanse, the people we elected to make the laws for our country have already earmarked $20 million for prototypes of said wall. The wall we were told Mexico would pay for. But in a way, it is. In the year 2010, in New York State alone, the tax revenue from households headed by unauthorized immigrants was more than $662 million. And most of those households are Mexican. Imagine Mexican people living, working, and paying taxes right here in the United States. But let's zoom out for a minute. Tax revenues of all types generated by immigrants, both legal and unauthorized, exceeded the cost of services they use, meaning they put more in than they take out. 43 million immigrants, who some would have you believe are mostly degenerates, though it's far more likely those immigrants have been exploited by natural-born Americans, Haitians nearly eight years removed from a catastrophic earthquake, unaccompanied minors housed in freezing detention centers, and highly skilled workers in Silicon Valley all lumped together under the heading of immigrants. Did they do it the right way or cut the line? Presently, there is a backlog of over 629,000 pending immigration cases. So when people say the system is broken, considering we are a nation based on immigration and one in which foreign-born citizens still put more capital into our economy than they take out of it, maybe we ought to ask ourselves what exactly a fixed system should look like. So let's go in on immigration. Soy una mujer trabajadora. Mi trabajo es haciendo limpieza en casa, oficinas. Eh, llevo más de dos décadas viviendo en Brooklyn. Tengo dos hermosas hijas. Una ya se graduó, la otra está a punto de graduarse. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Venía a ver a Kendo. A Kendo. 
refugiándose en la oficina. Mis hijas me, me apoyaron mucho a que, a que buscara yo ayuda. No puedo dar mi identidad porque ahorita estoy en el procedimiento de deportación. Entonces, como que es un caso difícil, por eso no tengo que... No puedo dar mi identidad. My name is Kendall Neistad and I'm an immigration attorney at Make the Road New York. We're a community-based organization. We have over 21,000 members who are primarily low-income Latinx immigrants. People believe there is a law that they can just submit an application if they've been here for more than 10 years. Make the Road started getting involved in combating the 10-year fraud. People walk in the door and they say, can you help me apply for the 10-year visa? And we have to debunk the myth and explain that there is no affirmative application that we can submit for somebody who's been here for 10 years and has a U.S. citizen child. Originalmente escuché por medio de un familiar, le recomendaron. Escuché de estos abogados que eran muy buenos. El beneficio prometido era que iba yo a obtener mi residencia. Eh, la Green Card, nos dijeron que sí, que se hacían cargo de mi caso porque era muy bueno. Pero nunca nos explicaron cómo era el proceso del caso. Entendí que era por los 10 años, pero eso no fue así. Cuando yo miré en el correo, llegaban los recibos y decían por asilo. Entonces yo, yo me quedé como que, ¿qué está pasando? Hola, buenos días. Hola, buenos días, ¿cómo estás? Bien, gracias. ¿Cómo está usted? Um, who might walk into the office saying, look, for the first time I got my work permit. Um, and typically they're excited, they're thrilled that they believe that they're en route to a green card. And we have to sit down and explain to them, your work authorization says that it's based on a pending asylum application. Did you know you had an asylum application pending? Uh, the response is no. Did you know what's going to happen when an asylum officer um, makes a decision in your application? No. Unfortunately, once the first application is submitted on their behalf, generally there's no way to prevent um, the beginning of a deportation case. Y cuando fuimos a ver al abogado y le dijimos que por qué por asilo, dijo que era la única manera donde yo podía yo obtener mi mi permiso de trabajo y un número de social. Pero eso no era lo que queríamos. When she confronted the attorney about why an asylum application had been submitted, he turned very hostile and repeatedly tried to um, degrade uh, her own sense of uh, autonomy and agency over her case, saying, you're in good hands, trust me, I know what I'm doing, um, if you cause any more problems, you're going to need to find new counsel. Ahorita estoy en la situación de que cancelamos la, la petición del asilo. Before she became my client, actually on her own, withdrew her asylum application from the asylum office. Uh, unfortunately for her, that just means that the process of deportation began sooner. She went to her first court date on her own without any representation. Eso fue muy, muy duro porque soy madre soltera y tengo mis dos hijas y fue muy difícil para, para las tres. Solo escucho hablar de inmigración y me da como que se me alborotan los nervios. Si veo que me llega algo por correo de inmigración, no quiero ni abrir, no quiero saber nada. When immigrants are under attack, what do we do? When Muslims are under attack, what do we do? When any of us is under attack, what should we do? Today we launched the Dream for Our New York campaign, demanding a clean Dream Act from all of our congressional representatives. The 300,000 folks that have been here for decades 
They have about 290,000 children that are U.S. citizens that we have to fight for. We have to fight to keep our families together. That's why we have to keep rallying. My fears are um, obviously um, the deportation of like young undocumented folks who will begin to lose DACA status. Uh, but it doesn't, it extends further than that, uh, also for their family members. What do we want? A Clean Dream Act! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? A clean Dream Act! In our view, the reason this fraud can be so rampant is a failure of Congress to pass comprehensive, just immigration reform that it makes no sense that somebody who's been here for such a long time and has such deep roots in the community wouldn't qualify for a benefit. And that's why providers who are looking to take advantage of people um, to get their money are able to use that misconception and place their clients at, at a risk of deportation. A nosotros abogados les he pagado como la cantidad más o menos de cinco mil dólares. Sí, ellas tienen preocupaciones porque yo soy, yo soy la portadora de, 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 de la casa y yo tengo que pagar biles, renta y, y al, al que me pase algo a mí se queda mi hija grande a cargo de todo y la pequeña le preocupa porque pues no va a poder terminar su escuela. Pero el, si la decisión es otra, eh, Va a ser un poco complicado, pero ellas pueden venir a visitarme. Getting to America and making enough money to support the family back home. The cornerstone of many immigrant aspirations. Charlotte was living the dream, but everything changed in an instant. Oh, no, 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 don't, don't lean up on mommy, okay? All right, bye. Have a good weekend. Coming to America. Okay. I wanted a change. Even though I loved my island and I loved being there, I wanted something different. Stay right there, baby. I just thought that it was like a, a bed of roses. Like everything just looked so grand and wonderful and I thought like this Hi, was baby. the land of milk and honey. Come give mommy a hug! Where you would Hi. make a lot of money and everything would be Hi. perfect. Living the American dream. Women and two children sent flying from a crosswalk in a chain reaction crash that may have started with a stolen car. This surveillance video shows two women pushing strollers waiting for the light, then entering the crosswalk. From the right of your screen, the driver of the stolen SUV crashes into another SUV turning into the intersection. Each car careened into a woman and child. I pushed my son's stroller out of the way, and that's when I got impacted with the vehicle and his stroller was crushed on top of him. I remember waking up in a hospital, seeing all the tubes. I can't move, I can't talk. I was frantic. I just wanted to know where was my son. They said, he's fine, nothing happened to him. You were in a car accident. And then I passed out. The pain was so severe, my pelvis was smashed. My hip was, was crushed. I don't have a hip socket. My right leg was broken. My femur had to get a rod implanted. I did over 30 surgeries. I remember asking one of the nurses, can you fix my leg? It's hanging off the bed. And she said, what leg? We had to amputate your leg. My two-year-old, um, he's the love of my life. Dreaming of him is what really kept me going because I really wanted to give up. I did, you know, I thought, why am I still here like this? And, you know, I had to be told, you know, your son, you have to live for your son. I left my son saying, um, mommy, mommy, everything was mommy, mommy. And then getting back to him and, you know, he was calling me you. Like he walked into the room um, when I was in rehab. I remember this so well. And he walked in and he was like, hey you and that 
broke my heart because he didn't know me anymore. We got help with, a, with the GoFundMe, which helped us a lot in getting a new, a new apartment, um, to help pay for certain expenses to move in. And that has been so wonderful because now I can actually stay again with my son and build back that bond that I've lost for a whole nine months being away from him. Wait right there. No, Mikey. It's okay. Don't ring the bell. Let's go. Good job. Okay, bam. Bam. It didn't bam. Okay. Let mommy help you. All right, you gotta, you gotta slam it really hard. Close it. There we go. It's a maze. That's amazing. Yeah, it's a maze. Wow. I'm not making it again. Forget about it. Okay, mommy. No, no, no. Mm -mm. Please? No, no, please. I'm going down. Across. Yeah. Like once he gets in the house, he wants his, um, wow! his time. Go fast it, go fast it. Wow, I don't know anything going. Uh oh. This is too much work for mommy. Mommy's tired. No, mommy's not tired. Why is she up? Oops. I think that once I get to the point where I get the surgery done again on my hip and I get my prosthetic leg and I'm able to move around. I think that I can still do, I will do a lot more with him. Get the one on the door. Oh my. On the door. On the door? Yeah. Oh. Things are really sad for me right now, knowing that I can't do so much with him. And there's still so much that he's still asking to do that I can't. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just really excited to just get back on my feet, be able to walk, take him out, go to work, um, do everything as a normal person. I mean, I'm doing a lot more than I thought I would be able to do, but I just want to do so much more with him. And now that I got a second chance at life, I appreciate being with him more and appreciate being his mother. That's too much? Too much. Okay, so drink some and then mommy's gonna drink the rest, okay? Okay. Mommy, don't cry. Okay, I'm not gonna cry. Whoops, sorry. That's okay, baby. It was an accident, right? Immigrants face many obstacles to finding work, and for Shang Li Lu, it was learning English. Eventually, he found his livelihood and his voice through the universal language of music. Jolly 
之后，会带上我自制的独弦琴，到地铁音乐委员会给我安排的时间和地点去演奏。二零零五年的二月份，我由中国深圳移民来到纽约，带上五千美元。首先学习赌场发牌员，交了学费三千美元。学了三个月以后，由于英语不会，自然就不能胜任发牌员的工作，等于白学。怎么办？随身带的钱只剩下一千多美元了。之后，我哥带着我去。大西洋赌城、康州赌城，总共十五家应聘清洁工，但因为我的英语不会，就连清洁工的工作都找不到。我哥就说：“你就准备回中国回去吧，你这次来美国就就当成旅游吧。”就这样回中国大陆吗？我我很不甘心，就跟我哥哥说：“我想我想留下来。”但是我哥说：“那你有什么特长？”我就说：“我有，我可以吹笛子。”我哥就说：“那么你就是试试看吧。”第二天我就鼓起了勇气，拿着笛子就到那个中央公园去。开始呢，我就不好意思。后来我就想想，你自己不管是工程师也好，你当过厂长也好，在这个地方你现在连饭吃都没有了，你还考虑什么脸面啊？推了三个钟头，然后呢就得了五十七美元吧。回来我哥说：“哎，你可以在纽约待了。”当时。中国大陆的各种经济还比不上美国，差得蛮远。我呢就考虑要把我的儿子、女儿，甚至下一代孙子孙女都把他们移民到美国来，所以我就来帮他们搭这个桥。我是五十七岁的时候来到纽约，还比较年轻，身强力壮。他们吹笛子吹到了六十二岁左右啊，就觉得有些累了，因为你要一站，一吹都五六个钟头。我想要必须另外找个乐器，拉二胡呢，在地铁里面有几十把二胡在拉，我肯定是不行。拉小提琴也不行，小提琴是老外的他们的本门绝活。我就是说，那我就学独弦琴吧。因为独弦琴毕竟是在纽约这没有见，很特殊一种乐器。练了六年独弦琴，二零一五年我就拿独弦琴去考这个 audition。结果呢，一考就中当时那个金爷说：“哎呀，他说
，东方的音乐给给我们这个这个 audition 带来一股春风。获得了地铁运用委员会颁发的演奏职业执照，我顿时有一种由游击队转为正规军的感觉，从此不再担心警察的罚款。我演奏的独弦琴是中国特有的、古老的、特别的乐器，因为。它有独特的柔美的声音和特有的演奏技巧，加之我自己加进了我独创的滑子与琶音，更加赋予了独弦琴的更丰富的表现力。又只有一根弦，因此常常吸引了众多的中外听众的眼球。每当我看到一个个老外聆听我的琴声，一个个相机的牌照，一一声声的打听这个乐器的历史，我就自豪而高兴。功夫练多了，手才能巧。不是有一个。台上十年功啊，不，台下十年功，台上几分钟吧，台上几分钟嘛，台下就十年功。我们也是弹了弹几分钟，其实我们是用很多的汗水浇筑出来的。Thanks for going in with us on immigration. They keep coming to America. We'll keep sharing the stories. If you want to check out past episodes of Going In and everything else we do at Brick TV, get us on the web at YouTube.com/slash Brick TV. Bye now.